Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so it is almost summer solstice. Uh, it is very hot where I'm at, and I'm just in my head drinking margaritas on a beach somewhere, so I thought it would be really fun this week to do a painting called a Margarita Moment, uh, which is a great painting for perhaps a summer sip and paint party or something like that, or just, you know, a party of one <laughs> is fun as well. Uh, and you could also paint multiple drinks into this too, but I have my one margarita for my margarita moment this week. Uh, I do apologize for the Sunday upload this week. I had a little bit of a housing crisis that looks like I got it all figured out uh, for now at least. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you for bearing with me for all the students out there that look forward to a class each week. I didn't want to let you down, uh, so I wanted to get this up on Sunday instead. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Three brushes that I'm going to be using for today's painting are my big square brush. I have a medium sized pointed sable brush and then also a small detail brush. I'm gonna get those three brushes in the water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I'm going to use for my background step today are just my primaries plus white. So blue, red, yellow, and white. And then if you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that I use and recommend, go ahead and check the description box below and I'll take you to my website and show you everything that you need to paint along. Okay, let's go ahead now and start with our biggest brush. And we're going to be doing a background step today before we do uh, a foreground step with all of the sort of different elements in it. So this is just going to be the sunset that we're focusing on right now. Uh, and then we are going to let it dry and come back and add that second layer later. So let's go ahead and we're going to make purple to start. So purple is going to be blue and red mixed together. Now, if you're having a hard time creating the, the perfect purple hue, uh, first off, it could be the quality of the paints. Uh, second off, it, it could just take some practice. So I do also have a course on color theory uh, called Color Theory 101, and I am offering a summer coupon. Uh, and the coupon code is SUMMER21, and it'll get you that class on color theory and how to mix colors and how to use the color wheel uh, and break that all down uh, step by step there in the same kind of way and you also have a custom tutorial there and that'll be $12.99 for June. You can also just buy purple <laughs> right out of the bottle as well too uh, if you're really having a hard time but mine looks really nice and I'm gonna add a little bit of white into it as well just to make it a little bit more opaque and just a little bit lighter I think I'm going to sneak a little bit more red in there and make it a warm purple. Okay, and then from the top part of my canvas, I'm just going to go back and forth with a nice stripe of that purple. Back and forth all the way. We're using acrylic, so we have a little bit of water in our paints today always to help it go nice and smooth. Okay, working our way down the canvas. I don't want to go too far. But now I'm also going to come from the bottom here with my purple. So that's what's so fun about this painting, in my opinion, is the inverted gradation that we get from the reflection on the water. I think it's so pretty. Okay, making sure that it soaks into the canvas texture. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit more red and a little bit more white. I'm gonna make a beautiful purpley pink. And I'm going to bring that right next door to my purple, both on the bottom, taking our time here, and on the top. working quickly here because the paint dries quickly acrylic paint 
stays wet for just a little few minutes to give you some opportunity to blend. But it's mostly about layers. Okay. Very nice. Now I'm going to take my yellow and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of red, a little bit more color theory here to create an orange. So pretty, a little bit of white here too. I rinsed my brush in between, important. I'm gonna take that beautiful orange right next to my pink, like so, right underneath. Very pretty. By the time we get to the center, we're gonna be just at yellow. Just keeping all of those brush strokes back and forth. This is a really good blending practice one today. Okay, now I went up a little bit in there, but as you can see, my paint's already pretty much dry. So I'm gonna come back probably with a little bit of pink there in just a minute. So you can just always rinse your brush Kind of a play, a back and forth. I'm gonna grab some pink now and pull that right in between and that's gonna help me blend those two colors together. So we're sort of walking our way from purple to orange here. Again there's more about all of this in my Color Theory 101 class. Once you understand the color wheel, it's really easy to walk your way up and down through gradations, color-wise. The actual act of blending <laughs> is another story. <laughs> okay, rinsing my brush again. And now I'm gonna add a nice big stripe of yellow right in the center, making sure I have a clean brush because I want clean yellow. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white. This is going to be right where our sun is. So pretty. And a little bit of water too. And the idea is here is to bring the yellow to the orange and blend those two together as well. And once again, quick drying canvas. <laughs> for my summer painting. So not getting very much blending there. So I'll just go ahead and grab in between a nice yellow orange and use that color just to sort of soften that line a little bit. When you cannot blend later. Perhaps that is the lesson of the week, is adaptability <laughs> in changing conditions. Okay, very pretty. And I'm kind of thinking about how this is like a sky, so it has clouds and that might, not, that might have like pretty reflection here in the water too. So a little bit of streakiness, stripiness there is good but I think that's really pretty I really like the colors that I got so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that let's go ahead and let this dry completely and then we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more so I'll see everyone in a few okay welcome back artists I have a fully dry background here and fresh colors on my palette I have my primary colors again of blue red and yellow plus also I have phthalo green which is a little bit of a different tone, uh, hard to get with the primaries, and then black and white. Let's go ahead now and jump back in. We're going to use our smallest brush. And what we're going to do is start now at our horizon line. And we're gonna create some islands, or perhaps these are mountains going up on the side of a cove, something like that. And we want to try to line up these lines with each other. So I'm going to do as straight of a line as I can there. And then I'm gonna kind of trace my way over here 
and continue. And then I'm going to sort of build my little islands like so, just kind of a totally random shape. And just kind of wiggle your brush. And I will create all kinds of good little nooks and crannies. And we're just going to fill it in with black. Nice. Cutting our gradation right in half there. And then underneath, we're going to do little horizontal lines that sort of translate the shapes above them, but not too perfectly. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to repeat on the other side, a little bit more solid right there. There we go. Maybe like so, however you like to build your little world. Sort of the steeper that you go, the more kind of tropical it looks. Although there's lots of flatter tropical places too, I suppose. So it depends. Where are you in your imaginations? Are you in Cancun? Are you in Tahiti? Hawaii, maybe? Hmm. Would be nice. Okay. Right underneath. Horizontal lines. Just like so. Okay. Just trying to get the two sides balanced. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, and now right in the center, we're going to create our sun. So I'm gonna grab some white. I have a clean, small brush here. And I'm mixing that with a little bit of yellow. And then you can either center it or put it a little bit off center. That's up to you. I think I'm gonna go off center today. And I'm just going to start by filling that in with a really light yellow. Just a little circle. You want to make sure that you're above your horizon line. Creating all those beautiful sunset colors. Okay, that looks good. Mm -hmm. And then from right underneath there, you're going to find sort of where the water would be and do a couple reflection marks of the sun's rays. Look at how pretty that is. What a nice simple way to do a little sunset, right? Okay, now I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow with just a pinch of red into it to create a little bit of a yellow orange. I'm just gonna go around that sun a little bit to create just the slightest bit of a gradation and to make it look round. Nice. Kind of just give it a little bit more of a sense of place. Just a light little outline and slight gradation like so okay that looks good all right now let's go ahead and do our little table i think i'm going to use my medium sized brush for that and we're going to start by just mixing up a little bit of gray really simple and then i'm going to come up probably about halfway here I'm going to do a curved line like so. That's going to be where my margarita is placed. Okay, and we're now going to cover all that beautiful sunset 
gradation work that we did. <laughs> but it's better to have it consistent underneath so that we can do those long back and forth brush strokes. And now our brush strokes are going to go in the direction of this little table that we're painting. Creating our little world. You could also certainly do a different color here, perhaps brown or tan. I just thought the gray was nice sort of next to the bright colors. Okay. Looks good. And now a little bit more. Just getting that filled in. All solid with gray. And then we're gonna add a little bit of sort of wooden texture. Okay, so I'm gonna grab down my small brush again and right along the outside edge, I'm going to do a very dark gray. Almost black, you could use black as well, be fine. Refining that outside edge of the table. Here we go. Okay, now kind of a medium dark gray, a little bit kind of in between there. I'm going to do some horizontal straight lines. And that's going to sort of give me the suggestion of wood grains. Very delicate. And then a little bit, even of a darker gray. If you do a couple curved lines like so, that really makes it look like wood grains. All around, like so. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna do the same kind of thing now, just with a lighter gray. So kind of creating the highlights here and the opposite sort of textures. There's a little bit too much paint there. Don't get too caught up in making anything look too neat because this is just for fun. And it looks good if it's a little bit stylized. Okay. Not like so. I think that's pretty cute. All right, and <laughs> just kind of playing around here and adjusting things as need be. There we go. It's actually switched back now to the darker gray. I'm kind of just balancing things out here. There we go. Okay. All right, now we're gonna let that area dry for a minute. I'm gonna grab my medium-sized brush again. We're actually in the home stretch here. So I'm gonna grab a little bit now of my phthalo. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of this light yellow that I have, and then pinch in a little tiny bit of black as well, just a pinch of black and a pinch of yellow. And if there's some white in there as well, then good. That's what's called a tone. Okay. And from either side here, I'm gonna create really pretty 
palm fronds. And you can certainly use your small brush as well. You're just going to start with one curved line and then have curved lines come out from either side here. So like so would be the center line and then coming from either side. Like so. And let's try with the small brush as well just to see how it feels. So my medium sized brush right now is a little bit older, so it's kind of splitting, which you can use to your advantage. Because it can create some interesting texture on its own. Okay, and then how about a few from the top here? Sort of like we're looking through a canopy of some trees close to us. Yeah, I think I like to use the medium brush instead. A little bit of yellow and a little bit of black. Okay, and then on the other side as well. It's okay if they just look like lumps of green right now because we're going to add highlights and shadows. Kind of working with the sort of feathery texture and then also allowing my brush to create some sort of skinny long graceful lines as well very deliberately. I think what would be good here would be to do the, the main bulk of it with the medium sized brush and then come in with the small brush and just kind of refine things. It's looking pretty cute. Okay, like so. <laughs> All right, now let's do some highlights and shadows. Let's go ahead and start with shadows. I'm going to take just black and green. And I'm gonna mix in a little bit of yellow. I'll get a real dark green. I'm gonna come in and add a couple shadows here and there. Kind of sneaking in a little bit more solid black as well. Okay, just a few brush strokes on each little area. Like so. Okay, and let's do the same thing but with a highlight. Grab a little bit of white. I'm going to mix it with some yellow and some green for a really pretty light green. And I'm going to go kind of in between those areas. Creating highlights. Like so, every little area really makes it pop. Really simple way to break down acrylic painting if you ask me. Shapes, shadows, highlights. Not too much thinking. <laughs> Just fun. Okay. I like it. 
Let's go ahead and do our margarita now, which is, of course, the most important part of the painting, if you ask me. So I'm going to start by using just white to create the shape of my glass. A little bit of water in there to help things go nice and smooth. My margarita is going to be pretty much dead center here. And what I want to do is start with a long oval. About like so. That looks pretty cute. And then I'm going to have curve one, like so. And then curve two, like so. That curve two is actually going to connect into sort of a bowl. Your bowl full of margarita. Okay, and then there's going to be a little kind of base here, like so. It's going to straighten out. And then in this case, the sort of bottom of the glass is going to come off the edge of the canvas here. And wherever you end up is fine, whether it's sitting on your table or going off the edge, either way is just fine. Okay, now I'm going to fill my margarita full of margarita. So you could do a strawberry margarita if you wanted. I'm doing a classic blended. Ugh, makes me want it real bad. So I'm making a yellow green. I'm just going to put that right in there, almost all the way to the top. A little bit of white helps my opacity so that you don't see through. Like so. And we're just filling up the little shape that we painted. How cute. I'll take a little bit of a darker green right along the bottom edge. And sort of swoop that through as well, just for some extra texture down there. And maybe up top as well and throughout. Okay. Good. So just playing with two different greens that are very close in hue. And I'm seeing now that I sort of lost this front line. So I'm going to come back in there real quick with some white. Like so. And just make sure I got a nice swoop around. Now I'm going to paint my little lime on the side. So I'm going to grab some darker green now. And I'm going to create a circle right along the outside edge here. And then I'm going to fill that with a slightly different type of green. So this green is going to be kind of like a medium green. And I'm going to have it with a little bit more yellow. You want to have brush strokes going every which little direction there, out in every which way. It's a little burst from the center there for our lime. Super cute. I'm going to grab some white. Now I'm going to go right along the edge of where the dark green meets the sort of lighter green there. And then also kind of in my center and coming out in that sort of sunburst way as well, like so. And then a little bit of a darker green right along the outside edges to kind of accentuate the slices like so. Just a quick little line and on the outside edge doing a little bit of that dark green as well looks nice. That looks about right to me. 
Let's go ahead now and grab some black. We're gonna finish off our margarita glass. So I'm just gonna take that black line and go all the way around with it. Your lime is going to be in front of this back line. So you don't wanna go through that. Okay, like so, that looks good. And then from the front, And then right underneath as well, sort of disjointing my lines on purpose, just to make it look fun and a little bit more stylized. Okay, this would just be clear glass, so I'm gonna do a few little kind of brush strokes through it there, like so. And then a little bit of clean white for some reflections on our glass. And I think that looks like a pretty cute margarita. I'm gonna grab some white and just take a few brush strokes into my sun as well, just to kind of pull everything together. Okay, I'm gonna go in there and just clean up that lime just a little bit more with some more of this kind of bright, limey color. If you painted along today, I would love to see your work. And I created a Facebook group called The Art Club specifically for that purpose. Uh, so we would love to have you over there. I'd love to see what you're painting, whether it be along with me or on your own. Excellent group there. Just coming in here and refining that white just a little bit more. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of today's painting. I would love to see you over in the art club and make sure to check out Color Theory 101 available on Udemy and that coupon code SUMMER21, S-U-M-M-E-R 21, will get you the lowest price of $12.99 and that's only good for the next 30 days. So happy summer, happy summer solstice. I hope you enjoyed today's painting. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay creative.